Hi, this is Robert Proctor, and I want to thank you for joining the conference today. Just to let you know a little bit about who I am, I'm currently the President and CEO of Multisoft Corporation. We've been providing software to the network marketing, direct sales, multi-level marketing industry since 1987. Today I'd like to spend some time with you talking to you about outsourcing technology solutions for your emerging network marketing company. I want to talk to you about subjects such as software and you know whether it should be a painful or not a painful experience when you're looking for software, what to be looking for in a software provider. I want to talk to you about software and budgets. Uh, I want to talk to you about expectations that you should be working with your software provider about when you're planning on launching your multi-level marketing company. Extremely important, I want to talk to you about the client-provider relationship, how important uh, providing or locating the proper software company and focusing on the relationship first and the software second. And I know that sounds uh, a bit strange. I'm going to delve into some details about that. I want to talk to you about what software should cost, uh, budgets, needs versus wants. I want to talk to you about whether the software company you're considering going with understands your compensation plan. You know, are they a uh, couple of guys programming from home or are they industry experts that have been doing this for a long time? I want you to think about things such as how do they handle support? Uh, how are they going to handle your growth? Are they an all-in-one solution? What's the technology that they're currently using? Is the technology that they're currently using scalable? Extremely important is how do they handle your growth? How are they going to handle your training? How are they going to handle your support? Extremely important when it comes to software in today's uh, instant everything age is are you being controlled or are you in control? I want to talk to you about technology solutions such as mobile, uh, social media, and other things that you may be considering as you grow your company. And I want to really talk to you about the importance of features versus benefits, uh, what I refer to as wants versus needs. So again, I want to thank you for joining the conference today. really appreciate your participation and your attendance. And we're going to spend about the next 45 minutes or so talking about outsourcing technology solutions for your current or emerging multi-level marketing company. Okay, so let's talk about what type of company you really want to be partnered with for providing your network marketing software for your multi-level marketing, network marketing, or party plan company. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is software should not be a painful experience. Uh, it shouldn't be like going to the dentist to have your teeth pulled. Uh, it should be something that you enjoy, something that you feel like you're being properly serviced with. Uh, if you do a search on Google, for multi-level marketing software, MLM software, or network marketing software, you're going to find about 200,000 results. And it can really be what you might consider a painful experience in looking for a software provider. I'm hoping that uh, this conference today is going to provide you with some information and some value so that you can make an educated guess on really what type of software company you want to be partnered with for launching uh, maintaining and growing your successful network marketing business. Okay, so let's talk a little bit uh, about budget. And here's the best analogy I have. Have you ever walked onto a car lot, been approached by a salesperson, and before having any idea what you're looking for, what your needs are, the first question out of their mouth is, what's your budget? And if when you call a software company, looking for multi-level marketing, network marketing, direct sales, or party plan software, and the first person that asks you, or first person that gets on the phone and asks you, what's your budget before knowing what your needs are, your wants are, or your requirements are, run away. Run away as fast as you possibly can. How can anybody ask you what a budget is without knowing what it is that you need? If you were going to build a house, you want to go to an architect that's going to first design the house for you before you go to a builder and ask them to build the house. Well, when you're working with a software company, you're asking a software company to build a house for you. And what you really need to do is have some blueprints, have an understanding of what it is that that software company is going to build for you, uh, what your current needs are, what your future needs are. So again, 
if the first question is, what is your budget, run away. Run away fast. You want to work with a software company that is going to provide you with value and experience and not just be concerned overall with how big your wallet is and how much money you have. If the first question is, what's your budget, let me ask you this. You ever walked onto a car lot to buy a car, you were asked what your budget was, and you left the car lot spending anything less than what you had provided as your budget. If you were going to buy a car for $25,000 and you gave the salesperson your budget of $25,000, you may have been able to go out of the car lot driving a vehicle that only costs $15,000 because that vehicle is going to get you from point A to point B. However, you ended up spending probably $28,000, $30,000 because that salesperson knew what your budget was going into the meeting, going into the car lot. So make sure that whoever you're working with for your network marketing software understands what your needs are, understands what your requirements are, not only understands what you are today, but where you're going tomorrow, and doesn't work based upon your budget, but works based upon what you really need to grow your multi-level marketing company, to launch it, to keep it going, and to grow with it. That's a lot of good information, hopefully, on uh, uh, looking at a budget. Hopefully, again, this presentation is meant to provide you with, with value on selecting a software company, provide software, not only today, next year, for years on, uh, for your network marketing company. So be cautious when you're talking to salespeople that they're not just concerned about what your budget is. Okay, so here's one of my favorite slides entitled, When Are You Launching? This really comes down to managing mutual expectations. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I get a call from a client sometime during the week that says they needed to be up and running within 24 hours or they needed to be up and running three days ago. They've already started selling products. They've already started recruiting distributors. Uh, they haven't delivered products. They need to calculate commissions in the next few days um, because they're either using a software company that is not performing in accordance with their expectations or they waited to the last minute to decide that they really needed to have a software provider or what they were looking at didn't meet their needs either for timing for managing expectations, or sometimes uh, and very often the budget. Again, going back to the what is your budget, and we're going to get into you know pricing and what does the software cost as we go through this presentation. So you know the first thing is when you contact a software provider uh, on the phone or you meet them uh, face to face, make sure that they've asked you the question, when are you expecting to launch? And you know depending on what type of compensation plan you have what your website design requirements are, and often what type of third-party integration, and again, we're going to get into talking about third-party integration, but what type of third-party integration you need for your software. So make sure that uh, both you and the software company you're working with have a clear understanding of when you need to launch your company. Also, when do you need to calculate your first commission period? When do you need to start shipping products? When do you need to be integrated with the merchant account provider, the sales tax provider? Again, things that we're going to talk about as we start to get further into uh, the presentation and further into, sli into the slide. So just make sure that uh, you're both managing each other's expectation, uh, that you've left plenty of time for testing, plenty of time for deployment. And you know this really comes into uh, under-promising and over-delivering. And in my business, I believe in over-promising and over delivering to meet everybody's mutual expectations. So just make sure that you've clearly outlined these expectations with your software provider. So this slide is probably the most important slide that I want to talk to you about, and that is the client provider relationship. And you know you can see two pictures here. You know, are you getting into a relationship with a software provider that you feel like you have a shotgun held to your head? Uh, or are you getting into some sort of relationship that you really feel is going to last the test of time? And there's five different things that I look at. The first thing is what I call the first date. And when you get a salesperson on the phone, you should be able to tell within a few minutes of the conversation uh, how you feel about the relationship. Are they listening to your needs? Have they taken the time to ask you the proper questions? Or are they just going right to price? Uh, 
Uh, are they asking you what, again, third-party integrations you're going to need? Are they asking you what type of compensation plan that, uh, that you have? Are they asking you, again, when you need to launch your company? So the first date is really important. First impressions are extremely important. Are they asking the right questions that you feel comfortable with? Um, unfortunately, in our industry of providing software to network marketing, multi-level marketing companies, what a lot of software companies don't talk about is the fact that most multi-level marketing companies will go through an average of two to three software vendors, providers, before they actually settle on the software provider that they want to work with. It's kind of like, kind of like a marriage. Uh, you know, sometimes a marriage uh, ends in divorce. Sometimes uh, it lasts the test of time. So, um, you know, these are really important things. Age does matter. Uh, is it a new software company that's only been around for three or four years that only has three or four different companies that they're working with? Or is it a mature software company, you know, kind of like our company, Multisoft, we've been around since 1987. We started in the days of disk operating system, the DOS, the, you know, five and a quarter inch uh, floppy CDs. So uh, age does matter. Uh, you know, what are they providing in their platform that is time and tested proven? Or are they a brand new startup company? Um, another area that I call the romance, what is the software company that you're talking to doing to earn your business? You know, when we're dating somebody, um, there's a romance portion to it. We're, uh, we're bringing flowers, we're going out to a nice dinner, uh, we're showing respect and opening the car door, etc. Same thing when it comes to the client-provider relationship that you're going to work with for your multi-level marketing company. Are they providing you with a demo? Are they asking the right questions such as, why don't you come visit our office, meet our team, uh, look us face to face? Are they taking the time to read the compensation plan, read your what we call an SOW, your scope of work, your SRP, your software requirements uh, procedures? Are they really spending the time with you to earn your business as you would in a romance? Or are they trying to rush right into where you feel like you've got a gun held to your head and it's a shotgun marriage like in the picture to the left? Or is it a true romance where they're really trying to earn your business? Because you've got to look at it. If somebody is really vested in earning your business and they're returning your phone calls right away, they're taking time to invite you to the office, they're showing you a demonstration, they're introducing you to the team. Uh, you know, my sales guys tend to you know, very often get me on the conference call, get me on a, an introduction call so that I can introduce myself and the company, kind of like meeting the parents, you know. Um, have you met the owners? What are they really doing to win you over? Um, you know, the next thing is the marriage. Realize that, you know, as I said, a lot of software vendor relationships end up in a divorce because the expectations weren't properly managed from the beginning. Uh, you know, there's a saying is a day spent will save a week, a week spent will save a month, and a month spent will save a year. And, you know, if you've got a software company that, you know, it's nine months, a year down the road, and you're not launched yet, it's probably not a good relationship. It's probably not a good marriage. <clears throat> One of the most important things to look at, you know, unfortunately in all relationships, is, uh, what is what is the divorce like? Take a look at your license agreement, that your contract that you have with the software company. Are they holding you to tasks that you've got to work with them for a year, two years, five years? Um, or is it a month-to-month -month contract that it's easy for both of you to get out of the relationship if something's not working? And then when it comes time for a divorce, if it does happen, how are you going to split the, uh, the communal property? You know, and bottom line is your distributors, that's your data. You own it. Make sure that in the agreement, the prenuptial agreement that you're going to have uh, just in case there is an impending divorce, make sure that you own the data. Um, understand that credit card data and passwords tend to be PCI, payment card industry compliant, and most software companies are not going to be able to provide you with that credit card data. If they are able to provide you with that credit card data, meaning showing you the credit card information uh, in clear text, it means they're probably not a PCI compliant company. So again, pay attention to the contract. Make sure that you've got an out, and make sure that when you do get the out that it's your data that you own. It's your website design that you own. It's your content that you own, and that it's going to be a smooth divorce for you and for the children, and the children are your distributors. The children are your, are your customers. So make sure that you've got a good prenuptial agreement in place of an inevitable or impendable, uh, impending. So you remember the third slide, what is your budget? 
And if the salesperson at the software company you've got on the phone first asks, what's your budget, run away. Well, we kind of want to turn the tables a little bit that if you're calling a software company, the first question you ask should not be, what does the software cost? I can't tell you how many times we get calls, emails, messages, um, live support, and the first question out of the individual that's looking to acquire software, partner with a software company, the first question is, what does the software cost? Well, as you can see in the bottom, how can anyone provide you with a quote before they know what your requirements are? Uh, it's kind of like building a house. Look at the house on the left. It's a dog house. And you can be comfortable in a dog house, and you can run uh, and work out of a dog house. Or do you want to live in a mansion? What is the growth potential of your company? There's really three things that we look at when it comes to what does the software cost. The first thing is your compensation plan. Do you have a properly documented compensation plan that outlines the three R's, the ranks, the requirements, and the rewards? The ranks are the titles and recognition that distributors are going to receive. The rewards are the financial recognitions that they're going to receive as they rank up, and the incentives that they're going to receive as they complete certain tasks, certain goals uh, set forth by the company. Um, it is really important that the software company understands your compensation plan requirements first and foremost. Second, what is your website design requirements? Is the software company going to do your website design? You'd be surprised that you're calling a software company for MLM software Many times that MLM software company is not in the website design business. And that's okay. We do provide website designs, but we're not in the website design business. We do have our work with phenomenal designers. So the software company that you're looking to partner with to be your vendor, to be your partner in this long-term relationship, um, let them know if they expect you to design the, uh, or if you expect them to design the website, or if you're going to bring a website design. Uh, and most software companies are going to be looking for a properly designed Adobe Photoshop. Or are you planning on integrating with WordPress? Are you planning on having a mobile website design? And we'll talk about mobile website design as we get further down uh, the conference today, the presentation today. Um, third, that's really important is uh, what third-party integrations do you have? And, and these things you would think are standard out of the box, many times they're not, such as how do you get money in? What's the merchant account provider that you're going to work with? How do you get money out? How are you going to pay your commissions? Uh, do you need sales tax integration? Do you need lead management integration? Do you need integration with help desk systems, with live chat systems, with social media? There's a lot of things that really encompass proper website design. So you want to make sure that the software company you're talking to understands your requirements, understands what type of company you are today, what type of company you're going to be tomorrow, next month, next year, three years from now, in order to understand what your scalability requirements are. And without knowing all of these things, how can any software company provide you with a quote? I will tell you that there's three components that pretty much the, the good software companies such as Multisoft are looking at. One is, uh, or we're going to be telling you about, one is an initial setup fee. And I hate to put it in these words, it's your skin in the game. How much you're willing to commit to launch your company. Can you Google MLM software and find software for $50 setup? Sure. Um, can you find software for $50 a month? Sure. Is that software that's going to grow into your future? Absolutely not. The software company you're working with, you want to make sure they're, they're vested in your future, that they're vested in your success. The second thing is an ongoing monthly fee. Uh, is the software company going to provide your hosting, your maintenance, your training, your support, your updates, your upgrades? Uh, what is the monthly fee? And then most software companies have a per distributor fee, a per transaction fee, or a per revenue fee. So make sure you understand that the software cost, you know, is, is software, proper software is going to cost money going into it. It's going to cost money to continue to maintain it, to upgrade it, to host it, to provide support and training. So there's a lot of things that go into what does the software cost. So I'm, I'm urging you, when you get onto the, onto the phone with a salesperson, with a software company, and after you feel like you've created a relationship and this is the company that you want to work with, you've dated a little bit, you feel good with the romance, 
that's when you should be talking about pricing. Pricing should not be coming up in the first five or 10 minutes of the call. Pricing should be coming up after the software company understands your requirements. So I touched on this in the previous, uh, previous slide. Is your compensation plan understood? First of all, have you provided the software company with a properly documented compensation plan that outlines the three R's, the ranks, the requirements to achieve those ranks, and the rewards that go with uh, achieving those ranks, the rewards, recognition, and incentive. Um, what type of compensation plan is it? Is it a binary, a matrix, a unilevel, a stair step? Does it have a breakaway, uh, some sort of coded bonuses, or other types of bonuses and recognition? You know, and we'll, we'll talk about other types of bonuses. Um, let's just touch on, is it a binary? So many times we have a client that says, well, we have a basic binary compensation plan. Well, there is no such thing as a basic binary. There's a 50-50 binary, a one-third, two-thirds, a weak side binary, a stair-step weak side binary, a binary with generational bonuses, matching bonuses. Um, is it a matrix? Okay. Is it a expanding matrix? Is it a re-entry matrix? Is it a recycling matrix? How wide is the matrix? How deep is the matrix? Do we have generational bonuses that go past the depth of the matrix? Okay, it's a basic unilevel compensation plan. You know, unilevel is going to have ranks, requirements, and rewards. How deep is the unilevel? What other types of bonuses are attached to it? Is there a fast start bonus? Is there a first order bonus? Is there a car bonus? Is there a lifestyle bonus? Is there a matching bonus? Is there a generational bonus? Is there a multi-tier generational bonus? Is there uh, a differential bonus? Is there compression? If there's compression, what type of compression? Um, is it a stair-step unit level, meaning that they have to hit certain ranks to hit certain steps, and as they hit or hit certain ranks to hit certain levels, and as they hit those levels, uh, other levels go up? Is it a breakaway? And I'm not going to go into breakaways during this presentation because breakaways have a lot of things to touch on. The same thing with coded bonuses. You know, is it a coded bonus type of compensation plan? Um, and what other types of bonuses? So make sure that the comp or the the software company that you're working with fully understands your compensation plan. Make sure that they've introduced you to their compensation plan team. That they've scheduled time with the compensation plan team to go over the compensation plan document. That you've provided examples to them and that they've returned um, the examples to you so that they're clearly understood. Again, everything comes down to managing expectations. The software company has to manage your expectations and you have to manage the software company's expectations. It's a dual relationship. So again, make sure that the compensation plan that you're going to reward, recognize, and incentivize your sales field force, your field sales force with is a properly understood compensation plan by the software company. So this is one of my favorite areas to talk, talk about, one of my favorite topics, which is customer support and customer service. I've been in the customer service, customer support industry since my teens because anything uh, that you're doing with the public, whether you're selling a product, uh, installing a product, providing a service, you're really providing customer support. And when you're looking to outsource your multi-level marketing software, it is extremely important that you understand the level of customer support that you can expect from the multi-level marketing software. To begin with, are they available when you're working or only when they're working? As I mentioned uh, earlier, Multisoft is an international company. We have five offices in four countries. So I can guarantee that 24 hours a day, six days a week, we're working when you're working. When you call in for support, which you're going to call in for support, don't underestimate the fact that you're going to need support. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to need support. And how is your support going to be handled? Um, judging a company and MLM software is not whether you're going to have an issue. You're going to have an issue. It's a matter of when you have that issue, how do they show up? How do they step up? How are they going to handle your support? A really good indicator is when you initially called the multi-level marketing software company to find out about their company, did you go to an on-hold recording? 
an IVR, interactive voice uh, recognition system? Or did you get picked up by a live person? Because that's going to be an indicator of the type of support that you're going to get. Are they available for you when you need them available or only when they're working? Are they a 9 to 5 company? And if they're 9 to 5, is it East Coast time or is it West Coast time? Because having MLM software is a worldwide support. You're going to need worldwide support. You're going to have distributors worldwide. So when I show, say show up, it's not a matter of are they going to show up, are they going to be there, but when they show up, how do they show up? The best level of customer service that you can judge a company on is how they actually handle the issues that they have. So make sure when you talk to a company about their customer service, their customer support, are they going to be there when you need them? Another thing to ask also goes to the uh, discussions of pricing is when you call in for support, are you going to have to pay for support? Some companies charge you by the hour when you call in for support. Some companies require that you purchase a prepackaged number of hours each month, kind of like insurance, whether you use the support or not, and it usually tends to expire. Uh, you know, I can tell you that we don't charge for support, we don't charge for training, and we are there when you need us. So make sure that, again, you've got a good relationship with the customer service, the customer support department. You're going to tend to, uh, to spend more time with your support team for the first three to six months than you probably do with your family, just getting your company launched, understanding your software, and getting those little idiosyncrasies that you didn't think about. You know, There's 100 balls in the air. Make sure that your support team is going to catch a lot of those balls for you and help you handle your support. So just delve into it, get some good information, and make sure, that, again, back to managed expectations, that everybody's expectations are going to be managed. I really hope you're uh, getting some good value for the time that we're spending together today. And if you are, make sure to like this presentation and share it with others on your management team, your administrative team that's looking uh, for multi-level marketing, network marketing software, that's looking to outsource their solutions uh, and make sure that they understand these key points when looking for an MLM software provider. Let's talk a little bit about growth and uh, you know where you are today is not going to be where you are in six months, is not going to be where you are in two years from now. In fact, what you don't know, you don't know. Uh, technology is constantly changing. Uh, we're constantly on the cutting edge of adding new features and functionality and keeping up with uh, you know today's uh, millennials and Gen X and Gen Y uh, that are rapidly moving into the instant everything uh, technology phases. And, uh, you know, technology that used to double A every 18 months is, is, is compounding more and more. So make sure that the company that you're going to work with, again, as I spoke about earlier, is vested in your success, meaning they're also vested in their success. Um, you know, find out what type of company they are and how they're going to scale up as you scale up your company. Uh, literally, is it a couple guys working from home? Um, is it a couple guys overseas that you're only going to be able to get uh, during their hours, even a team that's working overseas? Even though the pricing may sound good, uh, when you need that support, when you need to get somebody on the phone, are they going to be there for you? Or is it a mature MLM software company that's been around for a number of years uh, that really understands what it takes to grow and scale uh, a network marketing company. I'm going to talk in, the, in a couple of minutes about uh, technology and, and whether it's scalable uh, and what are the features versus the benefits, the wants versus the needs that you're going to need in your multi-level marketing software. So again, find out where are they located. Do they have physical offices? Uh, are you able to reach them? Uh, are you having to call a cell phone? Or are you actually calling real people in a real office? As I mentioned earlier on how they handle support, uh, are you leaving a message and hoping to get a return call? Or are you going through an IVR system, inter interactive voice response system? Or when you pick up a phone, is somebody live answering the phone from sales support? Are you able to get to the president of the company, find out information about the company? So again, check into the time they've been in business, are they an all-in-one solution? 
Uh, are they going to outsource a lot of needs? More importantly, what are the relationships that they have with other providers in the industry? Your MLM software company is not going to be your merchant account provider, but do they have the relationships that you need? They're not going to be your commission payment platform. Are they integrated with commission payment technologies? Again, we're going to get into this as we talk a little bit more about technology and scalable. So. Make sure that the MLM software company is truly vested in your future and in your success and not in your failure and just getting paid to set you up, not being vested in growing with you. If you haven't quite figured it out by now, I am extremely passionate about technology. Um, I've been involved in technology, software, websites, uh, going back to the early 80s. Uh, for those of you that are a little bit older, you know the days uh, of America Online, the days of uh, the 14,000 baud modem, uh, all the way up to today's age of cloud storage and cloud facilities and uh, instant scalability. So when we're talking about technology, talk to the MLM software company that you're considering. Um, what type of technology are they using? Are they on antiquated code? Uh, how are they going to integrate with third parties? You may not think of third-party integrations today, but certainly as you continue to grow and scale and expand your company, again, as I said in the previous uh, slide, you don't know what you don't know. And a year from now, what your needs and requirements are going to be, what your uh, features and benefits are going to be, we have no idea. Technology is changing at a rapid scale. Uh, how are they going to update the software? Do they have to actually take the website down or are they scalable enough that they're able to instantly update the website, um, perform updates and upgrades to, without having to actually take the site down? Um, extremely important in today's uh, ever-expanding uh, international MLM software is are they available globally? Not just globally that you know, your software will load in, in, uh, in any country, but do they support multiple languages? Do they support multiple currencies? Are they going to support international shipping, international warehouses, international taxes, international commission payments? Um, you know, extremely important, again, is the technology. And as I said in the previous slide, is it a couple guys sitting at home in, 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 a, in a room, or is it a large company that's, uh, that's using outsourced technology themselves? I can tell you that we are not in the hardware and bandwidth business. We've been outsourcing our infrastructure for uh, servers uh, to a third-party company uh, that is global on their scale uh, for the past eight years. And that's fortunate because when we have an issue with the hardware or technology, just as you may have an issue with software, we have a worldwide team that we can contact. Uh, you know, I've spoken to them on a Christmas day or, or a Thanksgiving day or a holiday. They're available to take our call. They work 24 hours a day because the Internet is not a 9 to 5 uh, industry. It's a 24 hour a day industry. So you know, find out how scalable are they. Uh, you may start out in a small cloud, but you know, a year or two from now, you've got a quarter million, a million distributors, and you're worldwide, and you may have to go into a larger scalable facility such as an Amazon uh, EC2 cloud expandable uh, environment or a Rackspace environment. Uh, you know, how often is the, the hardware updated? Do they have failover uh, when it comes to the service providers? You know, if, uh, if an Internet trunk goes down between, uh, you know, Asia and the Pacific Coast, the Pacific trunk goes down, uh, how are they rerouting around the world? Uh, is their data cached? Are their applications cached? There's a lot of information that you need to find out. And especially, how are they going to handle third-party integrations? Because uh, you may not be looking at it today, but you're going to want to eventually integrate help desk systems, live support, lead management systems, sales tax systems, commission payment systems, multiple payment gateways, um, social media, mobile technologies, the list is endless when it comes to technology. Um, and again, it's changing rapidly. So make sure that the company that you're working with really understands technology and how your company is going to scale and what your requirements of scale are going to be as you continue to grow your company. Again, I can't tell you how important it is for growth and understanding what the technology is and if your MLM software is able to grow and expand as you are.
I touched on growth and scalability a little bit uh, in the previous slide uh, when we talked about growth and what's the technology. Um, I want to touch on it a little bit more so that you really ask the right questions when you're talking to a potential MLM software provider. Uh, when I say MLM software, I'm also referring to network, mar network marketing, uh, multi-level marketing, MLM, direct sales, party plan. They all encompass the same thing. Um, find out, are you buying inflexible software, kind of what we would call box software or off-the-self off software, or is it software that's going to take you where you're going? You know, I mentioned uh, earlier third-party integrations, and you want to ask the software company if they support third-party integrations and specifically what their API, their application programmer interface uh, availability and technology is. Um, connecting to third-party companies, uh, you could have a .NET system that has to talk with a PHP system. You may have a system that you've got to drop files onto another server and pick them up to update your system or uh, for shipping methodologies. You really want to find out, is the software that you're getting flexible? or is it going to scale with you? There's a lot of software applications out there that you know, they may look really good from, uh, from the front face until you get inside and start working with it, and then find out you really got what you got. You got a box software program that can't be changed. Uh, you need to be able to grow and expand and scale up. As I mentioned when I first started talking today, uh, you know, many MLM companies will go through two to three MLM software company providers until they find exactly the right solution. It's not just relationship or support based. Uh, many times it has to do with scalability uh, and understanding is that software really going to scale up. When we talk about scalability also, it's is your database going to be scalable enough to handle uh, the number of distributors that you're going to put into it, the amount of data that you're going to store in it, the number of commissions that you're going to store, uh, and the details for those commissions. Is the genealogy tested up to a million or more distributors? Uh, you may be thinking as you launch your company, well, you'd be happy if you if you put in 5,000 or 25,000 or 50,000 distributors. Uh, you know that's a pretty good sized network marketing company. Uh, you know it's nice to talk about being a B, a billion dollar network marketing company, but how about being a multiple M, a multiple multi-level marketing or multiple million dollar uh, network marketing company? Is the software company going to be able to support you up to 50,000 distributors, 100,000 distributors? I can tell you over the years we've had a number of clients come to us that the software that they were using performed extremely well until it got into uh, up to a certain number of distributors, and then all of a sudden the software started to, to crash or it was taking uh, more than seven days to calculate a one-week commission period, uh, or it was taking 36 or 48 hours to calculate uh, commissions that should be able to be calculated in a couple hours. So make sure that the database can be grown, that the applications can be grown, that it's going to support your future growth, that they have the proper APIs, application programmer interfaces built into the software, or that they can build them into the software to be able to communicate with many platforms and many technologies. Again, you know, we don't know what we don't know where technology is going to be a year, three years, or five years from now. We can certainly design and develop software that's going to support growth as we go down the years. Make sure that your software and your software provider is going to be able to support your growth. So I touched on support a couple slides ago, and I really want to come back and touch a little bit more on it because support and training has to do with the growth of your company. As I mentioned, when you launch, if you're launching a new network marketing company and starting with a new MLM software platform, or even if you're an existing MLM, soft, MLM company migrating to a new software system, you're going to need support. You're going to need training. In fact, it's uh, pretty certain you're going to spend the next three to four months, up to six months, uh, you're going to spend more time with your software company, um, learning your software, learning your compensation plan, working with the customer support team uh, to make sure that things are flowing smoothly, making sure that your administrators are being trained, that your comp plan manager is being trained, that your content managers are being trained. Um, and let's talk about training for a little bit. When it comes to uh, licensing your multi-level marketing software, 
What type of training is going to be included? Is there going to be web page training? Is there going to be phone training? Is there going to be GoToMeeting training? Do they provide webinar training? Uh, do they have videos online that you can refer to? I can tell you that you know, as of today, and it goes up every week, we have over 120 videos that train our clients on almost every aspect of the software. Um, do you have to pay for training? There's companies out there that uh, you know, make sure you look at your license agreement, that divorce agreement, that prenup agreement that I talked about uh, uh, much earlier in the presentation. Uh, you know, do you have to pay for your training or is your training included? Um, are you able to go see the company in person um, and be trained? And do they have multiple offices? Do they have offices worldwide? Uh, for training, you know, you may uh, have support and customer support representatives over in Asia. Uh, is there an office in Asia that you'll be able to go to to have your CSR tra staff trained, um, or do they even offer in-person training? In fact, that's you know, if you're going to judge the size of the software company that you're thinking about working with, if if they tell you that they don't offer in-office training. I'd probably be highly questionable whether they're even working out of their office or, again, is it a couple guys, a couple girls working out of their home. Um, check and make sure that you're able to go in person and get trained. And then, again, do you have to pay for that training? Are you going to be charged when your additional CSRs or administrators or staff that you hire six months or a year from now, are you going to have to pay for them to be retrained? Um, I know that we store all of our trainings in a Dropbox so that when you do bring on new staff in six months, a year, two years from now, your staff will be able to refer back to the trainings that we provided you today, next week, next month, and they'll be able to go through the same trainings again because they have access to those video trainings. So again, delve into the training and support that's going to uh, be provided to you. Again, it's not if you're going to need to be trained, it's when you're going to need to be trained. It's not if you're going to need support, it's when you're going to need support. And how do they show up? Again, not answer the phone. How do they show up? How do they respond to the problem that, or the issue that you're going to have? That is the ability to gauge a good company is not whether they have issues. Software is software. Plan that you're going to have issues. Hope for the best. Plan for the worst. But how do they show up and how do they respond to your issue and do they take care of your needs and do they give you uh, manage expectations of when those issues, those problems, those solutions are going to be handled. So a lot of good uh, information to, to know. Again, I hope I'm providing you with good value here. If you are getting value from this presentation, again, make sure to share it with people on your team that are also looking to find out about what your MLM software is going to provide and what you should be looking for in a technology solutions provider. So here's some really good things to ask your potential MLM software provider to find out, are you in control? Are you being controlled? What I mean by that is how much capability do you have to make updates to the software, meaning when you want to change your menus, are you able to do it or do you have to contact the software company? When you want to add additional pages to the website, when you want to update the enrollment, when you want to add videos, when you want to add images, when you want to uh, add uh, information into the back office for your distributors or your customers, when you want to add orders into the system, um, especially when you want to update products, update SKUs, add additional auto ships, <clears throat> add pages to the website, I add content. Are you able to make those changes or is only the software company able to make those changes? Now, if you remember a couple slides back, we talked about uh, what is the type of software that you're getting? Is it software that's in a box or is it software that's scalable? So make sure to ask the potential software company what type of control you have to it, what type of access you have to it. Are you able to add your own administrators to it or do they have to add administrators for you? Is the software uh, user friendly? for your administrators? Is it user-friendly for your distributors? Is it user-friendly for your customers? When you want to modify 
categories in the shopping cart, subcategories in the shopping cart, put in certain feature product pages, certain feature SKUs, uh, certain updated enrollment options that may only be for today or this week. How much control do you actually have over your software? Are you in control or are you being controlled by the software provider? Good questions to think about. So let's talk for a couple of minutes about mobile and other devices. You know, back in the summer of 2015, Google came out and made a huge announcement that they were going to start ranking mobile websites higher than desktop websites, meaning websites that could be seen on mobile devices as responsive and adaptive. And that was a huge blow to the industry because everybody was just starting to get into developing mobile websites at that time. And you know, <clears throat> with almost 7 billion mobile phones around the world, it really took on a life of its own, I think, a lot faster than anybody had ever expected it. And certainly corporate America and websites and companies around the world were not prepared to ramp up as fast as Google uh, was ramping up to uh, uh, how they were ranking mobile websites. Well, today, there's about 70% of all searches are done online. And even with that, only about 15 to 20 percent of all websites are actually mobile. Mobile being that uh, you don't have to pinch your fingers and expand the screen like we used to have to do on, on iPhones and Droids, meaning that when you go to a website, it automatically determines that you're on a mobile device and determines that it should show a mobile-friendly version that tends to be more of a vertically designed website instead of a more horizontally designed website. So. Uh, when you start talking to your software provider, find out are they supporting mobile. Um, a lot of software companies say yes, they will support mobile, and it really just comes down to, well, they'll support you putting a video online, or they'll support you putting a PowerPoint online, etc. What you need to find out, especially because all of your distributors are going to expect replicated distributor websites, is find out from your software provider, your MLM software provider that you're considering, do they support replicated mobile websites? Meaning when somebody goes to robert.abccompany.com, the software intelligently determines that you're coming from, you're viewing that website on a mobile device, an Android or an iPhone, and dynamically changes the replication to function on a mobile phone. Now, Let's face it, companies today still are going to be running their businesses on computers. If you're in customer support, if you're in sales, if you're in marketing, if you're the CEO, um, you know, we still have to have desktop computers to run companies. I mean, Apple and IBM and Dell uh, and, uh, uh, are certainly not going to go out of business when it comes to providing Q computers. However, today's distributor and today's customer is expecting a mobile website, um, although not everybody has. In fact, a, lot, a small number of software companies actually have <clears throat> actually have replicated mobile websites. Multisoft in our Market Power Pro system happens to be a replicated mobile website technology, meaning that from the front face of the website, the home page, the public facing pages, the shopping cart, the distributor enrollment, the customer enrollment, the landing page, all of that is mobile. Getting all of the pages inside a system to mobile for any company is going to be quite an undertaking. Make sure, though, that when you are talking to your software company, the potential software company, that either they already support replicated mobile websites or that at least that is on their agenda to get done in the next quarter or two quarters because your distributors and your customers are going to expect your company to be mobile ready. I really hope those of you that are watching and listening to this presentation are getting a lot of good value uh, that you can share with your team, really understand what it is that, uh, that you need to be looking for in outsourcing your technology solutions, and starting to get some good questions to think about when you're talking to a potential MLM software provider such as Multisoft to ask some of the right questions. Uh, you know, the things that I've gone over with you today, and there's, there's a couple slides left here, the things I've gone over with you are things that we've experienced since 1987. I've personally experienced in the last 20 years with creating relationships with network marketing companies. You know, it's interesting, the slides that I'm showing you, the first question, 
we're always asked when somebody calls is, number one, what is the price? That's, that's always the first question. And again, how can we tell you what the price is before we know what your requirements are? Number two these days happens to be, is it mobile responsive? And most people don't even know truly what mobile responsive is. Hopefully I gave you a good answer on the previous slide. The third question popping up a lot now these days is, does it support social media? And my answer always is, yes. What do you want to do with the social media? And you'd be surprised that most people say, I have no idea what I want to do with social media. Let me give you a couple ideas. You've seen a lot of things on your phones where you can log in or sign up with Facebook or Twitter or Google Circles. That's one of the nice features and benefits that we have in our software that you might want to think about when you're looking at other software companies is, can I sign up for the opportunity or sign up as a customer in the shopping cart with my social media. That's a nice functionality and log in with my social media. Here's another nice functionality. You're in the shopping cart. You see a nice product. You can share that product on your social media. You can share it on Instagram. You can share it on YouTube. Share or not YouTube unless you've done a video. Share it on, on perhaps Pinterest. Share it on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, on any of the, you know, as of right now, over 350 social media platforms and more growing all the time. Um, do you want your distributors to be able to share their earnings? Not really. Do you want your distributors to be able to share the opportunity? Not really. You want your distributors posting in social media about the vacation that you're going on because of the company that they've been involved with, be the new car that they've bought because of the company they've been involved with, the weight uh, loss that they've experienced, how, how well their skin looks now because of that. You want to remember, social media is a double-edged sword because as nice as it is to have that social media, a lot of people don't realize once it's out there, it's out there. And what are your distributors saying about you on social media? So not just does the software support social media, of course it should. Put in your policies and procedures of your company how your distributors should be using social media. Most companies should start to consider a social media guidelines and social media acceptance and use policy on how distributors and customers should be talking on their social media about your company, your products, your opportunity. Remember, your brand lives on the Internet and your brand lives in social media. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're getting into social media, whether then does the software support it, but more importantly, how are you going to use social media? How are your distributors going to use social media? And how are your customers going to use social media? Again, a good salesperson in network marketing uh, that's looking to uh, bring you on as a partner for software is going to be able to answer most of those questions for you. So here we are on the second to last slide, ready to close up the presentation. Again, I want to thank everybody for their time, their attendance. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the presentation. hope you've got a lot of value. Hopefully you've got some questions to, and some things to think about. Here's the last slide I want to focus on. Features versus benefits, or wants versus needs. And there's a picture of a pig on the left, and there's a picture of a cash register on the right. And the question, lipstick on a pig, what results are you looking to achieve? You really need to decide what in your software do you need to run your business versus what do you want. Everybody wants to drive a Mercedes or a BMW or an F-150 truck, but you need a vehicle that will get you from point A to point B. What is it that your distributors really need? What is it that you really need as a company? Well, I can narrow it down to a few things of needs and then some things that are nice as wants. Number one, you need a good corporate website. There's a saying, you never get a second chance at a first impression. So make certain that the website design, the company that does the website design, does the best possible job. Because you've got about five to six seconds to impress somebody when they come to your website or they're off to another website. I can tell in under a couple seconds if somebody has invested properly in their website or if they bought a template, slapped up a couple pictures, and really didn't pay attention. Again, you never get a second chance at a first impression. That's a need. A replicated website. Your distributors need to have replicated website to send potential distributors to and customers to. You need a shopping cart. 
You need a merchant account to be able to collect money. You need a payment gateway. You need a compensation plan. You need the ability to calculate commissions, and you need the ability to pay the commissions. Everything else is really nice wants. Yes, it's great to have good genealogy. It's great to have a good newsletter system. It's great to have a nice news system, an FAQ system, a lead generation system, a lead management system, an SMS system, a texting system, um, a scrolling news system. There's so many systems I could talk about that are really good to need that you need. You know, it's nice to have a good customer support system. And if it's in your budget, you know, if you can afford to do it without taking away from your comp plan, without taking away from your marketing, because I can tell you, marketing comes before sales, sales comes before product, product comes before compensation. You've got to be able to market your product. You've got to be able to sell your product. You've got to have a field sales force that's going to do that for you. And you've got to have a compensation plan. But it starts at a website and a product and a shopping cart and the ability to transact business, calculate commissions, and pay those commissions. Those are your needs. Everything else is a want. And if it's in your budget or if it's included in the software, you know, I know we have several pricing uh, packages that based upon budget, and again, we don't like talking about budget, we'd rather find out what your needs are and then fit you into a package after finding out what your needs and requirements are. But we look at your needs, not necessarily what your wants are, because they are completely different. Features versus benefits, wants versus needs. Again, is it lipstick on a pig? And what are the results that you're looking to achieve? The picture on the right says it all. You're looking to ring the cash register. That's your goal as a network marketing company. I really want to take uh, time to thank you for taking time out of your valuable day. I know there's things that you could be doing other than spending the last 45 minutes to an hour listening to me and watching a presentation. Uh, in closing, I want to let you know, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you're doing or learning to do. And that was said by Pele. I have another saying that I really like. If you can see it, and if you can believe it, you can achieve it. And that was written by Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich. I'll let you know. If you can see it, and you believe it, Multisoft can help you achieve it. If you got value from this, share it with other people. Really appreciate the time today, and have a great day. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you.